Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is Brendan Edwards. I'm the Department Head of Library and Archives at the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto, Canada. I'd like to talk today about the critical, diverse, and sometimes neglected role of libraries and archives in museum settings. I'd like to acknowledge that I had some help with this paper from our archivist, Charlotte Chaffee. Let me sketch out for you a little bit of who I am and where I'm coming from. I'm a Master of Library and Information Studies, and as well, I have an MA in Canadian Studies and Native Studies, and a PhD in Canadian History. I have a mixed bag of professional librarian experience, including government documents, special collections, advisor to First Nations public libraries, academic librarianship, and museum librarianship. I also have professional experience in university teaching in Canada and abroad. I've been the Department Head of Library and Archives at the Royal Ontario Museum since October of 2015. The Royal Ontario Museum is a 102-year-old institution, and it's been home to a library and archives in disparate iterations from the museum's earliest days. The ROM is a museum of art, world cultures, and natural history and is Canada's largest field research institution with research and conservation activities around the world. The ROM boasts more than 6 million items and 40 galleries, and is one of North America's largest museums. More than 1 million people come through the museum's doors annually. About 3,500 of those 1 million visitors utilize the library and archives, and this is the best estimate based on the last six months. The museum has dual, sometimes competing mandates, and both are literally carved into the limestone exterior of the building. And those mandates read, the record of nature through countless ages, and the arts of man through all years. The ROM Library and Archives mission is to support and further the research of museum curatorial staff. In a museum with broad dual mandates, fulfilling our mission is both exciting and challenging. We are a small staff, however. In addition to myself, there's just one archivist, 0.65 librarian, and 2.65 library technicians. Our collections consist of somewhere around 175,000 items, and they are dispersed throughout the museum in at least three locations. The largest proportion are held in our main library and archives, which is open to the public and is accessible through the galleries followed closely by our Far Eastern Library collection, and the remaining materials are scattered in various curatorial and research departments. Like the fluid physical spaces in which we reside, our collection practices and our ultimate purpose and role within the museum are often fluid as well. It's no exaggeration to say that many staff and visitors at the ROM have a very fuzzy understanding of the role and place of the library and archives within the institution. One of my tasks as the new department head has been to build a stronger sense of understanding within the museum as to the importance of the library and archives in fulfilling the broad museum mandates. This confusion and uncertainty of some staff and visitors is warranted when we consider broadly the multiple historical purposes of libraries and archives in museum environments. The former chief librarian and keeper of the National Art Library at the Victoria, Art, Victoria and Albert Museum in the UK outlined that there are historically three broad purposes of museum libraries. The first has been to provide documentation on the objects within the museum. In such instances, the museum library is seen as a tool to provide support to the museum staff alone and is generally not intended to be open to the public. In other instances, museums that could only physically collect a small number of objects, develop libraries as extensions to their artifact collections. The museum would obtain one or two examples of an object, while the museum library would collect books, periodicals, etc., in which examples of hundreds more objects of the same or similar type are outlined. The third purpose of the museum library has to been to view the book not only as an information-carrying device, but the book is an object or artifact in its own right. In these situations, the librarian is also considered a curator. 
In whatever forms museum libraries might take shape, museums build their scholarship through libraries. In many museums, the function of the book as an information carrier and the book as a cultural object are often split, and different management units tend to look after these two different functions. This is partially true at the Royal Ontario Museum, where many, but certainly not all, antiquarian books are considered artifacts in our Canadiana, European, and Far Eastern departments. On top of this, we must also consider the threefold purpose of archives in a museum setting. Broadly speaking, archives serve the role of collecting, preserving, and making accessible institutional records which function as a collective memory of day-to-day -day museum operations. This role serves both present-day administrators as well as scholars. Secondly, museum archives hold value for cultural historians and historians of science, particularly as archives endeavor to preserve and make accessible the papers of past curators and researchers associated with the work of the museum. Finally, museum archives can provide rich source material for exhibitions and serve as the museum's museum. As you might have gathered, there's no single concept of what a museum, library, and archives should be. They differ from each other as to their origin, the makeup of their collections, and the way they are organized and funded, and the nature of their relation to the museum or the parent body. At the ROM, the library and archives, with our small staff, limited resources, and constricted spaces, we do our best to fulfill each of these six broad purposes. The museum library's overarching purpose, and to an extent the purpose of the museum archive, is to support research into the museum's collections and their context. In and of themselves, artifacts and objects are silent, and for the museum to paint a picture of an object's context and history, considerable research is necessary. The museum library and the archive are there to provide the context within which an institution's specific collection of objects can be researched, documented, and interpreted. Museum libraries and archives also hold a purpose in supporting research into the methodologies for conserving objects. And finally, museum libraries and archives also support research relating to the display of objects and into exhibitions. In an increasingly digital world, the role of libraries and archives in museums is made further complex. Like libraries and archives in the public, academic, and other realms, we must confront the modern stereotype that we're no longer relevant or useful, because after all, everything is online nowadays. This is the general impression, even amongst museum staff in some cases. Furthermore, museums are institutions that by the nature of collecting and exhibiting objects require considerable amounts of physical space. They also struggle to maintain relevance and appeal. Museum spaces, therefore, are a very hot commodity. In an institution, in an institution like the ROM, with six million objects ranging from art to world cultures and natural history, there truly is no such thing as enough space. In today's modern view, that all information is or should be available digitally, the physical spaces that museum libraries and archives inhabit are not surprisingly highly coveted to expand public exhibition spaces. When you're working in an area specific institution, for example, just a library or just an archives, there tends to be little confusion between what is part of your collection and what isn't. In the museum environment, these lines are very murky. Libraries and archives become information systems within a broader information system of the museum. Our archivist at the ROM, Charlotte Chaffee, pointed me to a few examples of materials um, that demonstrate this, this fluidity. Margaret McLean uh, was an official guide at the Royal Ontario Museum from 1919 to 1924, and she was a founder of the first education programs at the ROM. Prior to her working at the ROM, Miss McLean spent part of her life in China and Japan. 
Miss McLean's journal recording her activities at the museum during her time working at the museum, augmented by a scrapbook of newspaper clippings, are part of the Mar Margaret McLean Fall in the ROM archives. Another earlier scrapbook created by Margaret McLean, compiled prior to her work at the museum and relating to her trips to Japan, is currently cataloged in our library catalog as a rare book. However, it's about to be permanently transferred to the Far Eastern Department as a collection item. Additionally, the ROM library holds a copy of a pamphlet written by Margaret McLean in 1905 entitled Chinese Ladies at Home, and the library also houses a 1990 reprint of this pamphlet, which includes a biographical sketch of McLean published by Oberon Press in 1990 under the title The Wise Traveler. How the two scrapbooks have been treated is interesting and rather unique to the museum library archive environment. The scrapbook concerning McLean's time at the ROM is considered archival, while the scrapbook commemorating her travels in Japan was considered a library item and is now about to become an artifact in the collections of the Far Eastern Curatorial Department. What makes one scrapbook archival and one an artifact? Why was the Japanese scrapbook a library item versus an archives item? As we can see with just this one example, the three areas can potentially all muddy into one. It all comes down to the individual institution's collections mandates, or lack thereof. In many instances, librarians, archivists, and museum curators share common purpose as keepers of collections, presenting expert knowledge, and devising public access. Museums, libraries, and archives are related to one another, bound by the materials that they keep. That said, librarians, archivists, and museum practitioners can certainly find themselves uh, estranged by territorial disputes of jurisdiction. The principles of archival practice involve concepts of preserving and provenance and the context of records. Archivists, as a rule, don't split up font or collections if they can help it. Archivists leave things arranged in the way their creator arranged them because information can be gleaned about record creators through how they were originally organized. In the above example of Margaret McLean, from solely an archivist's point of view and professional training, both scrapbooks should be kept in the archives as part of the Margaret McLean fall. At the same time, archivists tend to be less interested in physical objects and, for example, have been known from time to time to discard the album or container that a set of records arrived in frequently because an archivist will separate things out so that they can be better preserved. The archivist's approach would, in many instances, horrify a museum practitioner, who view the album or original container of an item equally important to what it contains. Librarians, on the other hand, as a rule and embedded professional practice, split things up according to classifications of subjects and normally aren't that all concerned with provenance. A further example of this in the collections of the ROM Library and Archives is a Sir Henry Pellet and Lady Mary Pellet auction catalogue, also known as the Catalogue of the Valuable Contents of Casaloma. This catalogue was published by the Jenkins Art Galleries in 1924 and is so scarce that even Casaloma does not have a copy in their possession. The marginalia within the catalogue, however, is very interesting but the ROM library historically did not record information about who owned the catalog or how it came to be in our collections. So this information is lost. This is the kind of information that would be critical to both an archivist and a museum practitioner. So how do we all coexist in the same institution where our professional practices stress different things? What are the implications of these differences in the museum? And what are the implications of these differences in professional practice on museum patrons, the museum library users, and museum archives users? These are questions that I, along with my colleagues, grapple with every day. I can't say that we have answers to these questions, but I do believe that we are on the cusp of a significant opportunity. At this point in the Royal Ontario Museum's institutional history, 
The museum has recently committed to engage in a massive digitization project. One and a half million objects are slated for digitization over the next five years. This means that the ROM's digital presence will transform dramatically, and discussions are presently underway to choose a digital platform that will suit the museum's needs. An opportunity herein lies for the ROM Library and Archives. Museum collections can be best supported by museum library collections when information can be accessed seamlessly from one single unified system that identify objects in both collections and allow the user to move from object to context and vice versa. This was outlined in a paper by Navarrete and Owen in 2011. Digitization, if approached as an act of converging, will provide an opportunity where information about objects and their context can be brought together within a single system. From the point of view of libraries, archives, and museums, digitization provides us with an opportunity to enhance both access to and appreciation of cultural heritage. This is really what libraries and archives and museums have been trying to do since day one. So at this point in our history, digitization of artifacts has the opportunity of tying together with a reference to library and archival material that's been stored away or hidden away in our collections and until now has been largely uh, inaccessible to the average researcher without digging uh, more deeply into the library and archives collections. It's our hope that digitization and the platform that we uh, end up using, uh, collections management software, will provide us with an opportunity to link library catalog records, for example, archival font descriptions and finding aids to the artifacts in the galleries. Ideally, this will be uh, more enlightening for the average visitor, and it also aids researchers uh, not only within the ROM, but uh, around the world, looking at the context of our, our objects and the, uh, the history therein. Once again, I'd like to uh, thank our archivist Charlotte Chaffee at the Royal Ontario Museum for her, uh, her comments on my, some of my discussion this morning. And I welcome certainly uh, the discussion from my colleagues uh, at the conference this morning and uh, certainly welcome questions as well. Thank you.